Hey guys, I'm Amy, and you've landed on Bella's Bargains. That's my cow, Effingham, and sometimes he co-hosts with me. He's got a lot to say. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar and a quarter, people. So stick around, consider subscribing, and don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the four uploads I do every week, just check out the description box for more information. Enjoy! Black, the page is white. Together we learn to read and write. A child is black, a child is white. The whole world looks upon the sight. A beautiful sight. Good job, Effingham. And now a child can understand that this is the law of all the land, all the land. The world is black, the world is white. It turns by day and then by night. A child is black, a child is white. Together they grow to see the light. To see the light. And now at last we plainly see that we'll have a dance of liberty. Liberty! World is black, the world is white. It turns by day and then by night. A child is black. A child is white, the whole world looks upon sight, such a beautiful sight. Hey guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains, my name is Amy. Welcome, welcome, welcome if you're new here because you're watching the playlist, stick around, we're gonna have some fun and I have some beautiful crafts for you for today's challenge. For all my besties, welcome back to my kitchen, you know we love to hang out here. So today um, is not, oh by the way, CCR, who doesn't love? I mean, come on, right, Effingham? Yes, black and white, just like you, yes. Effingham really liked the crafts that I created today because that song I sang, because everything I made today is black and white. And yes, it's Easter. It's really, really beautiful. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So today, instead of Totally Easy Tuesday, which is what my normal upload would be, although I have to tell you, these were all very easy. You guys are gonna be able to do them. Um, I mean, I could do them anyway, but uh, I'm on a, I'm doing a challenge. It's called five for under five. So I'm going to have the playlist link down below. So don't forget after you watch mine to go visit the other ones and make sure you tell them all that Amy from Bella's Bargain sent you by to watch the videos. And I hope you find some channels that you really like and you decide to subscribe. But in the meantime, let me tell you who's hosting this. So Missy from Crafty Cove DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. They are the regular hosts. They do this every month and then they always have a guest host. And their guest host this month is Tammy from Happiness Created. So I'm super excited to do this challenge. Um, and I got to be honest with you guys. So when you watch this, I'll be coming back from Vegas. But I'm filming this on Saturday. And I was getting all ready, trying to get my videos done before I left. So I knew I wanted to do the five for under five because it fell on Tuesday. So I made these amazing five things that were spring for under five only to realize I'd looked at the wrong month and that this theme for this one was Easter. So I've saved the spring things. I'll use them another time. And I'm like, oh, now I gotta recreate five things. But so I did that very quickly this morning. So that's how you know they're easy. I got them all done within, I think it was took me about three hours, which that's not bad to whip out five crafts. Okay, and that was just like on a whim trying to get these done. So um, first of all, thank you to the co-hosts. Make sure you visit their channel, the, the host and the, the hostesses and the guest hosts, make sure you visit their channels. I'll have them all linked down below. And right now, let's get into what I made. But first, 
Let me just remind you guys that um, I do four uploads every week. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And if you want to know anything more, just click in the description box down below. Let's go. Ooh, this was so fun. All right, so this whole thing started. I knew that, I thought I was done with Easter, and then I realized that the theme for this was Easter. So, like, okay, I guess I'll do some more Easter. So, the, my bestie, Eminem, who you, all my regulars, you guys know, she sends me stuff all the time, and she'd sent me this sign, and I was like, oh my gosh, I never found it at Dollar Tree, but it's so incredibly beautiful. So I wanted to redo it, so I did. Um, and I did, in the thing, you'll see how it starts out, but this is how it ends up. Isn't that incredibly beautiful? Ma! Okay, so let's just talk about what I did here. So um, first of all, I am so parched. You know, I'm so glad you guys come and join me in my kitchen, yeah. It's fun to sit around and chit chat and talk about crafts, isn't it? But I need something to drink. So I'm still getting over pneumonia, even though I'm going off to Vegas for my honeymoon. So I'm still trying to like fill myself with waters. You guys know I love these from Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could get Power Water to sponsor me and I'll just drink Power Water in all, their video all my videos. Somebody should do that. Mm. Well, anyway, okay. So... She sent me a sign um, and I redid it. And I think it came out incredibly beautiful. So I'm gonna explain to you though, one of the reasons I think this looks so good, this sign initially was all, it didn't have this black frame. That's all by itself, you'll see in the video. So the, this sign had this shape to it, which was really cool, but I felt like it just got lost and it needed the, I felt like it really needed the black around it to pop it, and I do. This was so simple. This was one of the signs from Valentine's that has a heart on it that says love. You'll see in the video. I take jot um, permanent black markers and I outline, I colored in all the wood. So this was wood colored. And so I just used a permanent marker. It's so easy. And then I took a furniture marker and went around the sides of this sign. And I used, I think it was maple or cherry um, because this sort of wood looking. Then I took the jute twine hanger out, put a ribbon jute twine, and put a bow. And I did put a little spackle in there to cover the hole on that one. And then this one, the bow sort of hides it. That's it, you guys. So this started me down my black and white theme. Also, why I'm wearing this dress. Um, and so I was like, oh, it's so like vintage looking, and I just really liked it. So then I headed down this whole other, I mean, I haven't done any, um, I haven't done like a black and white Easter themed day, have I? No, I made that bunny, but which I'll show later. Okay, so so that started me down the thing. So the next thing I made was this. Um, Eminem also sent me some bunny butts and she was like, she wanted me to use a bunny butt. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a bunny butt. These little, um, I should talk about cost, huh? Oops, sorry guys. So this sign was $1, $1.25. This one was $1.25, $2.50. I'm gonna say that we have probably a dollar's worth of bow up here, so about 350. If you count, if you had to buy the the permanent marker, you know, maybe 450. But anyway, it's about 350 to make this one. Okay, so these plastic um, pots they have at the Dollar Tree right now. So I wanted to use a bunny butt, but the bunny butts come with pink, and I'm trying to go all black and white. So this is super simple. The pot was a buck 25, and it says "Live Life in Full Bloom." You guys get it? There's the bloom, full bloom. I thought it was funny. So super simple, right? Took the pot. I, I keep like leftover styrofoam and whatnot. I just have like a, a tote thing that I throw it in. And so I'm always just digging out of that just to, I don't, to, to put my plants in. So I take this recycled thing that came out of something else, Dollar Tree, glued it in there. One stem, this is just one stem. This plant is one stem. So, and then um, put some jute twine around this, a little bow and changed his paws to black. I did that using the shelf liner the, that's very cool, it's like rubbery, and it worked perfect. So the total cost on this one, so live life in full bloom, come on, this is funny. So 125, 250, 375. Now you can, if you wanna count the ribbon, I don't know, I wouldn't, but because I figure that's, I feel like that's part of your craft supplies, but there you go, yeah. Cute, right? Live life in full bloom. But um bum. Okay. Then uh, where did I go next? I can't remember. I think I went to this next. So they had these plates at Dollar Tree. 
um, all different sizes, right? And um, what does this totally make you think of? Like, ooh, Alice in Wonderland. And Marcus got it. I was like, what does this make you think of? Because I was totally thinking Alice in Wonderland when I did it. All right, I love this and it's so simple. What is this? See, now I'm gonna put this by my front door, just like where you throw your keys or your change or whatever, right? I'm not gonna use it for a food plate really because I have the bunny on there, but it's just like a cute little accent piece on your hall tree or something. You could hang it too, I guess, if you wanted to. I didn't go that route. I went really simple. This cost $1.25 for the plate, and there's six of these in a thing, so it's less than $2. And all I did was, you'll see in the video though, I paint the bunny one side. The side that has the green briar on it, because I like the bunny facing that way. Yeah, I couldn't get the green briar removed, so I flipped him over, uh, and I did put spackle in his spot on his ear where you would normally make it an ornament, right? So look, isn't that cute? Just like a cute little plate, like throw your keys on. Yes, simple, simple, simple. Then I still had the bunny, which I had bought the bunny with the intentions of making a gnome bunny out of him. It never happened. So the bunny was still in my tote of Easter stuff. And I was like, all right, it's time. So this is a really good hack, you guys. And I hope, you know, maybe you've seen it before, I don't know. But they sell at the Dollar Tree the mesh strainers, they come too. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. So I took the mesh strainer, I cut it open in the back so I could get the ears in and then just sort of tucked it. Can you see that? You really can't, it looks fine in person, by the way. And then, oh my gosh, I lost it. Dang it. I forgot to hot glue on the flowers. And I was so gonna do that too. I'll have to do it now. Um, not right now, but I mean, I will do it. Okay, so I, put the mesh on, pulled his ears through, and then put the ribbon band on there. I bent up the hat a little bit. This is just, um, these they're white flowers from this dollar, from Crafter Square Dollar Tree. Gave him a little bow tie. Notice I used um, cotton twine to pull the bow together and then left it hanging, almost like a bolero kind of look. And then gave him a bouquet of flowers with a ribbon on it, black and white, of course. Like he's going off to see his sweetheart. This is on the wrong one. He's going off to see his sweetheart and give her a bouquet of flowers, staying with the black and white theme. Yes, isn't he cute? And then I did sort of like, I bent his rim, his hat of the rim up just a little bit. Um, but you could, you could, you could move it all kinds of different ways. Anyway, I just like the way that looked. So there's my sweet little bunny now. Now he's sweet. I didn't think he was so sweet before. I thought he was kind of ugly, but now he's kind of cute. All right, and then I'm um, actually... There's another challenge I want to do called Crowner, um, Crowner Up. I think that's what it is. And it's, um, it's you, you copy a craft from another crafter and we're built, women building up women. And so Megan from um, Crafty Quinn had done a pumpkin using one of the silver platters. And so I told her I was going to copy it, but now I'm not using it for that. I ended up doing it today. That's a long way around. But anyway, I made this. And how cute is this one? So it's silver tray. Um, I used the chalk paint from Dollar Tree, painted the inside, and then can you guys see, I sort of airbrushed around to give it sort of a tarnished and really make the ridges come out. Can you see that? And then this was so simple. I took one, these are from the garlands. So that was, um, they had the garlands of the bunnies. So I took the black and white check one. By the way, I gave him a bigger tail. The tail that it came with was too small. Added some greenery up here, a ribbon glued a hanger on the back, and there we go. So let's talk about cost. This was $1.25 for this. This, I mean, it was $1.25 for the package of them, but I only used one, so now I have extra ones, okay? And then um, the greenery and all that, I mean, we could say these are just, I picked them off of picks that I have. But if you had to go buy the stuff to do this all on your own, it would be like one, two, you could do it with one pick, three, 75. And then you could get an, some ribbon. You could have gone with just the polka dot or something. So you could do it for the five for five. Um, anyway, I think it came out so cute. It's exactly, I mean, this really did come out the way I saw it. I was just like, what? Now, technically that's five, okay? So, but I was like finishing this one up and I had one wood, um, I had another, Bunny, one of these. That, oh, now you've seen it. Anyway, long story short, I was like, no, forget it. I'm doing one more. So technically I did six for, for under five, but that's okay. You guys don't care. 
Um, so you get a bonus, bonus craft, and that's this. <clears throat> okay, so this was a sign from last year, which was still sitting in my Easter tub. So I pulled it out. This is just the contact paper. Put the contact paper over it, um, and then took one of the bunnies from the garland. I painted him, glued him down, gave him all this ribbon up top here, and a hanger, and that was it. And it's so pretty. Now, I want you guys to notice something, too. I'm not, these are not expensive ribbons from Hobby Lobby. I go to Dollar Tree and Dollar Tree only. But you can make ribbons just as beautiful as you want them. So this one, I really went for more of like the tails, just adding in that dimension and the depth from the tails. Um, but there's so many different ways you could do this. This was so simple. Obviously, I furniture markered the sides. So easy. And literally, how cute is that? Okay, now you get one more bonus. I've already did this video, but it was matched so perfectly. I have to show you and I'm gonna tell you guys, you guys can go back last Thursdays and watch the video where I made this. But this was so easy. It's definitely under five and it was black and white. So I'm like, I don't care because it's sitting on my piano as a decoration. I'm like, I'm gonna show you guys anyway. So that's this bunny. So this was the bunny form. Again, this was contact paper. I gave him a ribbon with the diamond wrap Thing, and this is a keychain that I took off and used for the tail. So another example of black and white Easter. All right, that's like seven crafts. Oh, and then I just took a pot from one of the cactus things and glued it on there for the stand. It works amazing. Okay, so there you guys go. I honestly, ironically, I think this ended up being my favorite. It was like this last minute thing. I was like, I just want to, oh, I wanted to use this paper because it's so, or contact paper because it's so pretty. So I think this ended up being my favorite, but... Oh, they're all, they're all so cute. This one I also love. I and I did use burlap ribbon on here, and I should explain. None of the rest of them have the burlap. I really stuck with the black and white. But that was because this one had this vintage farmhouse feel to it. So talk about, I mean, you can see the difference here, right? Sort of farmhouse and more shabby chicish. But anyway, that's what I did. Do you guys love the black and white Easter? I do. I think it's really cool. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget... The playlist is linked down below. Go visit everybody else's. Please tell me which one of these was your favorite. And um, now you can watch how I made them. You'll see I had some flubs. Unless I cut those out, I'll probably cut them out. Because um, there were some things that I tried. And I'm like, Ugh! that didn't work. Um, but I had a great time doing that, that this morning for you. So, all right, guys. Enjoy the rest of my video. And then moving on to the playlist. Don't forget, tell them Amy from Bella's Bargain sent you. Thank you so much again to our, co for, to our hostesses for this week's five I mean, this month's five under five challenge. There we go, all right? Because the ink is black, the page is white. Together we learn to read and write. All right, everybody have a great day, great week, a great life. And as always, Effingham, what should we tell them? Yes. From your singing crafty crafter, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. piece of fur from something and one plant sprig one bunny butt and some shelf liner so we're gonna take the pads of the feet and make them black not pink so let's get this going this is so easy 
that's just a recycled piece of like styrofoam from one of the, I think it's a cactus plant or something with the Dollar Tree, but I save all those things. Um, cut my pick down, and this is just one pick, and it was the perfect size for this um, pot. And then um, some cotton twine to add some more black and white to that pot. And so I hot glued it just to keep it in um, lined up on the brim of that, and then went around three times, knotted it, made a little shoelace bow, dovetailed the ends, tied it on with the cotton twine, and then knotted the ends of my cotton twine, of course, because I always do. Then moved on to the bonnet butt and wanted to change the pads on those feet to the black because I'm doing, it was black and white. Actually, I think it looks much cuter too. It's, it's more pronounced with the black pads and I could have used the faux leather, um, but I already had this out because I thought I was gonna use it on another craft. And in the end, I absolutely loved how the shelf lining looked at, for the pads on the feet. And I just experimented with cutting out the different sizes. Eventually, I got what I wanted and then just did a little hot glue dab, just a tiny little dab for each one of them and glued those on. So then once I had the pads on, I had to figure out how much I needed to cut the stick because of course I want the bunny butt not sticking out in the air. I want it on the lip of the um, pot. So I did that. And then eventually I got a little piece of styrofoam just to steady the bunny butt pick. You see that right there? And it held it up against the side so I could get it exactly where I wanted. Live life in full bloom. I think that's funny. Okay, here's the bunny. Which I don't think is very cute, but that's okay. We're gonna do the bunny over anyway. So I'm gonna give the bunny a little apron and a hat. Maybe just a skirt. Maybe I should just give the bunny a skirt. I think it has to be an apron. Could be a dress. I don't want to do a dress. We're just doing an apron. <laughs> All right, let's dress her up. I started by putting the hat on this bunny that I thought I was going to make a girl. So. I was trying to figure out how to pull the ears through the hat and make it look right, like put an ear on each side of the top of the hat. In the end, um, after experimenting just a little bit, I ended up basically slicing right up through the middle of the hat. See, I tried one ear, that didn't work. Um, oh, I tried different ways. In the end, I actually like how it came out, but I ended up slicing the rest of the way up to the hat so I could pull the ears right out of the middle. And then um, bent the brim of well, I glued the back of it a little bit so that the wires would stay together. Bent the brim up a little bit, and then I realized I thought it looked more like a boy bunny now. So I went with that, and I thought, oh, that's a lot easier than making a dress, a bow tie is. So added the check ribbon brim to the brim of this hat, which these strainers make amazing hats. And then um, I started to make him a little bow tie, so I just did a loop and then tied it with black cotton twine, and gave it a little bit of a tail, almost like a bolo effect on it, and just hot glued it on his neck. I did not the ends of that cotton twine, of course. And then decided that it'd be super cute if he was had a bunch of flowers. So I just got some greenery in my, you know, leftover greenery. Took these white flowers and put them on there, added a couple extra sprigs. Notice that I had five, right? So three flowers, two green sprigs. I tell you guys all the time, three, fives, sevens, odd numbers. And then um, just took the black ribbon instead of the checked because I didn't want necessarily the bouquet to match him per se, but wanted it to complement it. And so white flowers, black ribbon, and then um, just glued it onto his hand there. And I have a little flower that I put onto his brim, like the flowers. And look at that, like how cute. He came out so cute. I love, I love him. I'm glad I didn't make him a girl. Okay, this is one of their faux silver trays and it looks egg shaped. So I'm gonna paint the middle part of it with some chalk paint. I'm gonna use a bunny from the this garland. I'm just gonna steal one bunny, a black and white one, of course, and just make a really pretty Easter sign. For 
first we take that chalk black chalk paint and um, painted the inside of it so it's fairly easy to do um, you get a little texture when you do this just because it's the chalk paint is a little bit thicker and then sort of airbrushing around the sides and left some sloppy like brush marks around because it sort of gave it kind of an aged look and it really brought out the design on the sides then a, obviously a permanent jot black marker and painted or colored in all around that bunny because of course we didn't want that wood to show I have to go get I believe my glass marker to get into the more intricate areas there you go um, and I love the glass markers because they have like a brush tip on them so they work perfect then I took off his bunny tail and I gave him a little bit bigger one because it wasn't big enough by the way I did Mod Podge over my chalk paint and I didn't film that so do a coat of Mod Podge over your chalk paint which those two white lines right there are the Mod Podge drawings. And then I just started collecting greenery. So first I tried the fern and I didn't end up liking that, but this is gonna be personal choice as to what you do. I went with more of the, um, just the leaves and the white um, tipped blossoms there are from the plants that I just hauled. So anyway, after I figured out what I wanted to put in there for greenery, dab my hot glue, start adding it on, just equalizing the sides, right? So put it on one side, then put it on the other side, and then glued my bunny down, because now I'm gonna put a bow, and I wanted to see visually what my bow was gonna look like with the bunny on there. That's why the bunny went on first. So of course went for the black check, and did a loop and twist. Notice twist, loop, loop, twist, loop, twist. And I did five on either side. And then I got a wire, what do you call these? Like, you know, hold your bread things together. I save those and use them for stuff like this all the time. So um, I just sort of fluffed it out and then decided where I was gonna glue it and made sure it was nice and twisted up and then glued that down. Um, once I glue it down, I realized I probably need a little bit more on there. So I glue it down and take a look at it, which is what we all do, right? And then decided, okay, I think maybe I need some more ribbon. Actually, it wasn't that I needed it. I realized it could take that. It would be well balanced. And then I do add two more sprigs. There's that pick I just bought at the very top. And I love this because it was the white on the end. So I was really sticking with my um, black and white theme. So then I pulled in the, did I go with the black ribbon or the polka dot next? I can't remember. Anyway, I do another bow on there. Um, so this is, I did do the black. So this is where it's not a common thing to do this with bows, but I will layer bows. So I made three separate bows and layered them as opposed to um, making them all together. And I love how this turned out because I could control the size and make it look really good. And then just added a, my camera fell there, <laughs> added a ribbon hanger on the back and we are done. I think this came out so beautiful. I hope you guys like it too. Okay, so I have this Happy Easter sign, which I love this sign. And then I'm gonna use um, a sign from Valentine's Day. I'm gonna incorporate these two and really pop this sign. And I'm gonna use some super easy jot permanent markers and then some ribbon, because we'll definitely give it a bow. So stick around, watch how this happens. This could not be easier. And it just took this sign to a new level. All right, so took this Valentine's sign jot permanent marker you guys and just I want you to notice I didn't go down the side like I knew I didn't have to because you weren't going to see that because I'm putting the other one on top but no paint no fuss I just jot permanent marker and color in the sides and the top of this it's so easy um, I love easy and I love no mess so after I did that then um, I took the cotton tails farm fresh egg sign and did a uh, furniture marker and just went around the sides of that. It did not do the black because this already sort of had the browns on the front of it because it's faux wood. 
just to finish off this sign, right? I didn't want the pressed MDF showing on the side. And then um, decided to put my hanger on before I glued my sign on. So at first I was doing twine with it. And anyway, I just ended up taking the black ribbon and knotting it twice, twice or thrice, so that it wouldn't come back through. Um, that was just to keep it in place. And then I have my hanger on. So now I'm gonna glue the sign on, which I only had to like, the, you know, on the points, add the glue. Oh, this looks so much better. It just like popped it. I ended up using, this is the only ribbon on this thing that isn't like truly black and white, because I ended up using this ribbon because it's sort of a more vintage farmy looking, I don't know. Um, so the burlap with the black coke dots and then the white ribbon. A super easy, use the cotton twine to tie it all together and then tie it up top. Added one more bow on there just because I felt like it could take it. And I, I think this came out really great. I tied the bow on with using the hanger knot and then um, just angle cut my ribbons, you know, dovetails, just angle cut. Took the little dab of hot glue just to hold the bow in place right there. And then there's a hole up there from where the original sign had the hanger on it. So I just sort of hot glued a little tiny piece of that ribbon there so that it would be forever covered. And then took the spec, uh, spackle stuff and filled in the other hole so that it just wasn't obvious. I love this. I think it's beautiful. I hope you guys do too. This is the easiest. All right, funny. Green briar side, painted black. And then I couldn't, the green briar kept just showing up and showing up and showing up. So this is two things, that really cool looking psychedelic plate. And then it reminds me of Twilight Zone. You are now entering the Twilight Zone or Alice Wonderland. I had to flip the bunny over and paint the other side and then glue her down. Bam, done. Such a cute little accent piece, like I said, for your entry or whatever. Easy. Okay, I have a great big Easter egg here, and it's just um, it's just a sign on this side. Everybody welcome. Anyway, I don't really like it, so which I don't care about that side. I'm actually gonna redo this, and make a really pretty black and white egg. You'll see. The one thing you should always do when putting contact paper onto anything, a piece of, of, of wood, whatever, is try and lay your contact paper face down and then apply the item as opposed to applying the contact paper to the item. Reverse it, apply the item to the contact paper. So I peel off my backing, get my egg, and then lay the egg over it. And now just press it down. And then I just sort of trimmed off the excess with scissors um, and worry about getting too close because I'm actually going to file the excess off with a nail file. Then I was smoothing it because you want to make sure you don't have any air bubbles. And before you trim it all off, get those air bubbles off. Because it'll affect the dimension on the side if you do the air bubbles after you clean it up. So then just took um, my nail file. I think I ended up throwing this nail file away because it was pretty spent. So we got a new one to finish it off. But this just gives it a nice clean edge. And um, it's it's pretty exact, right? Because you're just doing it on the edge. So there you go, new nail file, told you. Now this is gonna go quicker. And cleans, this just cleans it up so well. I love, this is really about the only way that I clean up my edges. Whether I'm doing Mod Podge, contact paper, um, I'm always using the nail files. I love the nail files. I buy them just for that. All right, so once I get this done, then what's my next favorite tool is my black permanent marker from Jot. And of course, I'm gonna take that and go around and color the sides of this egg. But I want you guys to note, so after I went around the side with my Jot marker, um, I then, you'll see, I angle it so that it slightly bleeds into the front of this, all right? So right now, I'm just Jot marking, marking, <laughs> chalk marking, I don't know, coloring the sides. And then um, I'm gonna just go around the edge with my marker at an angle. And you'll see, you'll watch it sort of pop as I do it. 
So watch this right now. Like, pay close attention. Look, boom, see that? Just gives it the slightest little outline and really finishes that egg up. By the way, if you happen to mess up and you marker onto your contact paper, a um, magic eraser takes it right off, FYI. All right, so now I take a bunny, and I wanted the bunny to go this way, so I painted on the paper side. And then I just did a little scuffing there to make sure that the paint held to it. Um, so I'm just gonna paint up my bunny, making all, you know, just solid black. I did not decide to put a bunny on this one, so that you could, if you wanted to, I just really liked the silhouette, clean silhouette of it, so I didn't. But it is an option. You could add a cottontail onto your bunny. Then, um, now that I've got the bunny done, I'm picking up the ribbons. I poked my hole back through for um, the hanger, and then I just did a loop hanger, looped it through, and then knotted on that side, leaving tails because that's going to become what I tie my bow on with. Now what I did was I took all my ribbons and I made tails, okay? So not a bow yet, I just took all the ribbons that I was using and I made tails first. Um, I like this, it gives me sort of a dangly effect on this very large sign, because this is one of those large eggs. And then went through and made my twist and loop bow with the black, um, knotted that off, and then it's like, okay, so. I like how that looks. Dovetailed all of my tails there. So I want you guys to know, right? So the the ribbon, the bow was only the black. It was the tails that were all the colors. And now I'm just going to visually center my rabbit there, put the rabbit down, and then some of the tails are a little too long, so I just trim them up so that they don't get in the way of the bunny right there. See that? Just double checking that they're not too long. So I just trim them up a little bit. So it didn't get in the way of the bunny. Anyway, this was so easy, you guys. So easy. And it looks super adorable. I love this piece. I hope you guys liked all the black and white Easter Day. Thank you again for watching this challenge. I love you guys so much. Consider liking and subscribing. And as always, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. And thank you again to the hostesses for this wonderful challenge. I had a great time. Maybe I'll do it again next month. Don't forget in the comments below to tell me which one is your favorite. Was it this little bunny here? Was it the sign? I actually think I really like the little accessory plate. Just the simple black and white plate with the black bunny on it. I think it's absolutely adorable. Although, live life in full bloom. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Bye.